Tonight, a judge sentences a Moscow man for child exploitation. And find out why students at Eastern Washington University held a rally. And a major sporting goods store takes a stand on gun control. Murrow News 8 starts right now. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Jesse Maywald. And I'm Brooke Wolford. Welcome to Murrow News 8. As the gun control debate continues, Dick's Sporting Goods announced they will no longer sell assault rifles like the one used in the Parkland shooting. Additionally, the nation's largest gun sporting retailer decided to raise the minimum purchase age for all firearms to 21 within their stores. Dick Sporting Goods will also be pulling all military style weapons from their shelves. We think it's the right thing to do. We, uh, you know, after after Parkland, <coughs> excuse me, we were we were so disturbed and, and and saddened by what happened in Parkland that we said we need to do something. And uh, we talked about what we needed to do, and we felt that we needed to make a statement. Walmart also announced today that they will no longer sell guns or ammunition to anyone under the age of 21. White House Communications Director Hope Hicks, who has worked with President Trump since the beginning of his campaign, announced her plan to resign. Hicks says there are no words to express her gratitude to President Trump, wishing him and his administration the very best. President Trump says Hicks approached him about pursuing other opportunities. He also praised Hicks for the work she completed over the last three years. The White House says the exact date of her departure is unclear, but will likely come in the next few days. The Supreme Court ruled that immigrants detained by the government do not have the right to periodic hearings or bond releases. Many immigrants spend expensive, extensive time in government custody, and the appeals court suggests that they should get the right to a bond hearing every six months. However, the Supreme Court voted against this decision and sent the case back to uh, the appeals court. Since Sunday, federal immigration agents in Northern California have arrested over 150 people who violated immigration laws. In a statement announcing the arrest, the ICE Deputy Director Thomas D. Homan lashed out at Oakland Mayor Libby Schuff, who warned of the impending ICE operations the day before they began. Homan criticized Schuff, saying she acted irresponsibly and recklessly. Agents arrested a fugitive and gang member who ICE deported four times already, as well as others with criminal convictions including assault, DUI, and sex with a minor as part of the raid. Students at Eastern Washington University held a unity rally yesterday in response to Europa, a white supremacist group that plastered racist posters across the campus earlier this month. University officials say the posters violated school policy, partly because nobody asked permission to hang them. Participants at the rally want everyone on the campus to feel safe, despite many students feeling startled by the signs. Over in Olympia, Washington lawmakers passed a bill that allows them to disclose less information than other public officials. Lawmakers do not need to release records of communications with constituents. Last year, a coalition of media groups sued after lawmakers denied media requests for these records. A Superior Court judge then ruled state representatives, senators, and their offices as fully subject to the same broad public disclosure requirements. Also in the Washington State Legislature, a net neutrality measure that prohibits internet providers from blocking content or slowing down web traffic now heads to the governor's desk. The bill is in response to the FCC's recent repeal of their net neutrality rule. The measure requires providers to disclose information about their management practices, performance, and commercial terms. State officials say a Pasco Seed Company received a $20,000 fine from the Washington State Ecology Department for pesticide waste. Syngenta Seeds released a waste classified by the state as an extremely hazardous toxic waste and a persistent dangerous waste. Syngenta currently sits in good standing with state regulations. However, as part of the settlement, the company waived its right to appeal. A Moscow man received his charges on including sexual exploitation of a minor. Ian Smay explains the, stipulated, the stipulations associated with the case. Ian? 
52-year-old Jeffrey Hannon received a two-year minimum prison sentence Monday for two counts of sexual exploitation of a minor and a single count of enticing a minor using the internet. Here at the Latah County Courthouse, Hannon pleaded guilty to all three charges, which came after he exchanged inappropriate photos with a 16-year-old girl and tried to meet up with a 5-year-old and a 12-year-old for sex using the internet over many years. Ian, did the judge set any other conditions for his sentence? Yes, he did. Hannon's guilty plea came with a condition that the prosecution would drop two additional charges. Also, Hannon will spend several months receiving treatment as part of his deal, after which he can apply for parole, assuming that there are no behavioral issues during the treatment. From inside the Latah County Courthouse, I'm Ian Smay, Murrow News 8. When we come back, we take a look at an Adobe event that rec record turned out on campus. And the Whitman County Humane Society holds a fundraiser. Stay tuned. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Last night, eight teams of four WSU students competed in the Adobe Creative Jam, where they worked together with Adobe software to create a new app. While the teams developed their projects, students gathered in the Spark Building to enjoy free food, take pictures in a photo booth, and escape to a virtual reality created by students from U of I. The challenge today was to create an interactive um, application, so mobile app, using Adobe XD or Adobe Experience Designer, which is a new tool that they came out with. So the students then were given a, are given a theme, and so the theme for today's event was empathy. Even fellow Coug Jake Siriani spoke at the event about how he used Adobe platforms to create the video that earned him an internship on The Tonight Show, starring Jimmy Fallon. Also in the Pullman community, the Humane Society just had another successful fundraiser at their annual charity dinner last weekend. Mackenzie Foster attended the event to tell us about how it went. This past Saturday evening, the Whitman County Humane Society hosted a formal charity dinner called the Furball. The event was held at the Schweitzer Event Center, and this year's theme was The Great Catsby. Over 50 grand was raised at the sold-out event, and all proceeds go back to running the Whitman County Humane Society and helping the animals. We turn out, have a good time. We raise a lot of money, about a quarter of our operating budget, um, and we get to show off some of the adoptable animals that we have as well. At the event, there is a pet parade where the shelter animals are walked around by volunteers to meet furball attendees. This is in pursuit of expediting the animal adoptions. Uh, as a board member, I am also a veterinarian at WSU, I'm a behaviorist, and uh, we have a shelter training program with our CBM students where we actually work with behavior disorders at, with these animals at the shelter and make them more adoptable. Money raised during the silent and live auctions support the Hope Fund, which pays for veterinary services for injured stray animals. Whitman County Humane Society is a no-kill shelter, which allows older dogs like Jack Jack here to have a better chance in getting adopted. So far this year, there have been 59 animal adoptions from the Whitman County Humane Society. Mackenzie Foster, Murrow News 8. Up next, Daryl Bivens will reveal if the snow will stick around. And see where Washington ranked on a list of best states. We'll be right back.
Don't worry. The 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. No more pencils. No more books. No more teachers. Dirty looks. School's out for summer. What this place needed was better graduation rates. So we worked with schools like Henry Ford High, and now they're up 18%. To help us do more good this year, go to unitedway.org because great things happen when we live united. Some of us saw snow last night, but so far today it's pretty clear. Daryl, any chance we might get some more snow later this evening? Well, Jesse, doesn't look like we're getting any snow anytime soon. As you can see behind me, it's actually pretty cloudy with a chance of meatballs, minus the meatballs, of course. And that's going to be stay pretty consistent for a little bit here, especially when we consider the rest of the state is have some pretty similar trends as we're going to get into in just a minute when it comes to being cloudy. We're not going to see enough snow anytime soon for at least the rest of the week as we'll get to here in a minute for the statewide map. Because as we'll talk about here, when it comes to the eastern side, we're experiencing a lot of similar stuff there. It's pretty cloudy, as you can see, throughout most of the eastern Washington here. And it's going to be and it's going to be stay like that for a little bit. However, we get here to the west side, it's getting a little rainy with a few breezes. Rock and go Mary Poppins here fly away, but it's a little breeze you should consider. And you might want to consider bringing a coat or turn on those wiper blades if you're driving your car around. When we get into tomorrow, it's going to stick around to being a little more cloudy as it is today. And it's not going to change much from the temperatures. So it shouldn't really change much from today. But we get into the five day forecast in a minute. That's going to rapidly change here pretty soon. Because as you can see, Right here, if we go into Friday, it's going to get a little, uh, it's going to get a little snowy here. And Saturday, it's going to be a lot more clear, but the temperatures will still be below freezing. And Sunday, Monday, are going to be the same till Tuesday, we get some sun coming on. Thank you, everybody. Have a good, have a good time. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Daryl. When we come back, a new set of rankings puts Washington and Idaho right at the top. We'll tell you how. Stay with us. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Washington State placed in the top 10 best states in the country with a neighbor not far behind. U.S. News and World Report ranked Washington State as the sixth best state in the country using education, economy, and strength of health care as argument. Idaho finished 12th on the list with the judgments giving the gym state high marks for their economy and public safety. Well, you know, I actually am from Idaho, so that's kind of exciting to hear that the two, two of my favorite states are ranked at the top. Um, public safety has to be really pretty much one of the most important things of where you know I'd want to live. So Couldn't agree more. Has to definitely be very important. Thank you for watching. Join us every weeknight at 7 and 10 p.m. for Pullman's only nightly newscast. Have a great night and don't forget to fo follow Murrow News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Good night Pullman.